I'd never been to a hospital and met anyone who's had amputations. Um, I found it quite shocking, actually. Um, incredibly moving, very emotional. And I thought, my God, you know, we've, here are we, we're fine. We've got nothing to worry about. Um, I, I just, I think it was a moment we felt we've really, really got to, sorry, I always get a bit emotional about this bit. Um, we've just got to do something. We just wanted to do something. I didn't think we had any great plan. It was just really simple, an emotional response. General Dannett suggested that we went for a swimming pool at Headley Court. That gave us a focus for our attention, so we started feeling better. We felt we were doing something. We said to the country, I don't mind how you do it, but get out there and do your bit. So run a cake sale, run up a mountain, do a marathon, do a bike ride, do things that are challenging for yourself and raise lots of money. Recovery centres were needed, that we need to bring our wounded together and start thinking about how we prepare them for the rest of their lives. That helped us focus. People who fight together should recover together. In 2012, I deployed on APEREC 16 in Afghanistan. I was a machine gunner in a rifle company within the Grenadier Guards. So I was giving an overwatch to my section up on a hill. I was there for about an hour. And as soon as I stood up, I felt um, a shearing pain in my right arm. And then I realised I'd been shot. After I left Headley Court, I decided that I was going to leave the army and return to education, which since then I have, and I'm now studying for a degree in British politics. I uh, served with the Princess Wales Royal Regiment, and I was diagnosed in 2005 with severe PTSD. was sent to Tedworth House, which was absolutely amazing, it really changed my life completely. And the, the people here and the staff are extremely helpful and turned my life around. So we started thinking then about holistic support, seeing the individual at the centre of what we do, medical, mind, body, spirit and family. These are the pillars that keep us all intact and they all have to be in balance. We're helping the wounded get their lives back on track, not just from the physical element, but from offering the holistic approach of offering them support with their mental well-being, being part of the fellowship of the Band of Brothers and Band of Sisters and supporting the families that have been affected and really giving them the opportunity to have a second shop. Through a whole range of different means, it's about developing self-confidence again, it's about developing a feeling of self-worth again, it's about giving people the support and the tools they need to, to realise actually they can be proper, fully contributing members of society again and can lead a really independent, fulfilling life. I had an engine fire and unfortunately the fire breached the cockpit of the aircraft internally and I was very badly uh, burned. Uh, you know, about 60% third degree burns. It was helpful heroes that actually introduced me to a surgeon and that alone realistically turned my life around for the better. If your legs don't fit, if you need prosthetics, you go back in the wheelchair, then you get depressed, then you're unpleasant to your wife, your relationships break down, then you have to get rid of your house, then you lose your job. So you can spiral down really quickly. But get it right, get your legs fitting properly, you're happy, you then can do sport, you can do opportunities, your morale improves, then you think perhaps I can get into a job. And you can turn the downward spiral and into an upward spiral pretty quickly. And every single time I meet one of the injured, I feel responsible. And so what keeps me awake at night is that dreadful feeling of responsibility that we will have done all this effort, promised these guys that we're going to help, and then in some way let them down, to fail or forget. And I can't let that happen. And we've got to be there to support them. And when we save for life, we've got to mean it.